Hello friends, welcome to the channel IT Simplify. This is part six of Azure App Services. And in this session, we'll see how we can access our Azure Web Apps securely by using service and private endpoint. For this demonstration, I'm going to use a web application with the name Mahadev. I already have a virtual network with the name Mahadev VNet in which I have a subnet. And there is a virtual machine with the name Mahadev VM. The idea being that with service endpoint configured, I should be only able to access my web application from this virtual machine, VNet only. So if I can show you on the portal, the app service is in running state. And if I go and browse, you can see I'm access, I'm able to access this application from my local machine. And uh, I also have initiated the RDP session with my machine with the name Mahadev VM. And if I go and browse from here, I'm also able to access without any problem. So right now there is no service endpoint which is configured. But after we configure the service endpoint, I will be only able to access my application from my virtual network, which is this VM. I won't be able to access this from any other place. In this example, it will be my local machine, so I should not be able to access that. So let's see how we are gonna configure that. So going back to the portal, I'm going to search for the virtual network. And from where I want to give access is Mahadev RG VNet. So let me go and expand it. And under settings, I have the service endpoint button. Here I'm going to add now this example does not just restrict you to an Azure app services. There are a lot of platform as a service. You can apply this to all these services. Now, since we are talking about web application, I'm going to pick Microsoft.web and the subnet in this case going to be my default and click on that. So the virtual network was updated Updated successfully, that is step number one. Now I'm going to go to my app service. And from the left blade under settings, I have the networking tab. Here I'm going to open up the access restriction. Right now it is allowing this application access from everywhere. So let me go and add the rule. Action going to be allowed, give a priority. If you want, you can give a description here. And under the source settings, I'm going to pick virtual network. And the network under which my VM is Mahadev RG VNet and the subnet is default. And let's add the rule. All right, so the rule was also created successfully. So let me go to my local machine and I'm going to refresh the page. And you see, I'm getting the error. And if I go to my VM and if I refresh the page, I'm able to access without any problem. So you can see that uh, I'm able to access this platform as a service from my machine without any problem. And that is how you're going to use service endpoint. Now let's look at how we can make use of now private endpoint in this case. But before I do that, let me tell you the difference between these two options, right? So we saw how to use service endpoint. Now say for example, if I'm trying to access this from my on-prem environment, I, I have this uh, PaaS offering. It can be a web app, storage account, Cosmos TB. If I'm trying to access anything say from on-prem, so I have this on-prem environment and I have this uh, platform as a service uh, offering, which is uh, in cloud. So if I'm using say service endpoint, I still need to have a public, I still need to go through the public internet to reach that maybe storage account or that application. And once I reach or that land onto that virtual network, I will be allowed or denied access to that platform as a service. The endpoint still has a public IP. Now that is very important. The endpoint has a public IP in service endpoint. But in private endpoint, the endpoint also get a private IP. That's the major difference. You get a private IP in 
private endpoint deployment. So it's much more secure. So taking the same example, if I'm using private endpoint, right, in this case, and I'm trying to access, say, for example, from a resources or platform as a service resources from on-prem. I don't need to go through the public internet. I can be right onto the mm, private network because the endpoint, in this case, the web application will be assigned a private IP. And I can show you that. So, for example, if I go to the Azure portal, and go to the app service. And under networking, you can see the inbound address is still a public IP, even though we have assigned a service endpoint. Yes, it's way of securing it. But in this case, the private endpoint still has a public IP. And you will see when we assign a private IP, this will change to a, a private IP address. So I'm going to show you that. But before I do that, let me just delete the service endpoint and then I will show you what are the steps for the private endpoint. All right, so I have removed the service endpoint. So let's see the workflow for creating a private endpoint. So I'm going to go back to my app service. Now, one thing to, or what you call a pre configuration that needs to be done is that. Uh, we need to have a specific tier for this app service. So right now you can see that I'm using the basic tier. And if I can go under networking, you'll see that private endpoint is not available because this tier doesn't support that. So I need to upgrade this tier. The minimum tier that you need to be on is premium tier. So I'm going to go under settings and scale up my app service plan. So right now it is under dev test. So I'm going to production and pick P1V2 and apply. So the app service plan was updated successfully. And now if I go under networking, you can see private endpoint option is available, but just keep an eye on this inbound address. So if I go and expand this, I'm going to click on add and uh, give it a name. and click on OK. So it's adding the private endpoint. So the private endpoint was created successfully. If I go and expand this, you can see that uh, uh, the connection status is approved here. But let me go back to my app service. And still under networking. Now you can see that I have a private IP, the inbound address is private IP by making use of private endpoint. And now if you want to integrate this maybe with an on-prem environment, the flow will be on a private network. And this way it is far more secure as compared to maybe a service endpoint. So these are the two options available. And uh, when it comes to securing your Azure app services from specific network maybe in a hybrid or totally in a uh, in a cloud environment hope you found this useful thanks for watching have a good day